All right. Uh, before we get started in today's office hours, I would like to ask you guys, if, if you wouldn't mind just kind of chiming in, um, give me, you know, a, a real quick thought of what you think about office hours. We're trying to make sure that we're meeting your needs. You know, are you getting ahas, stuff like that? I would really, really appreciate just some some user input. How are these going for those that typically attend? How um, how could we make them even better? If if that's something that uh, that you guys would be willing to share, no statement is wrong or right or anything like that. Just want to hear you guys' opinion before we actually actually get started. I really value the um, the specific details, like when Kendra did that session to explain how the contact um, that grid works and all of those things, because there's so many things inside of Realvolve, and if we don't know how they work, and sitting through an hour webinar only to find out it didn't answer what I wanted, um, <laughs> that, that it's so it's super helpful for me. Very good. I uh, I agree with you. There, there's been so many webinars. Actually, I was in one yesterday with Zapier. It was a, a Zapathon thing that they had put on to learn some stuff about AI and Zapier. And you know, there were some things that it was all production. You know, they they did have a Q and A section, but they really didn't go into a lot of the things. So, you know, being able to ask questions. And that's one of the things that we want to make sure everybody realizes is that the office hours are for you guys. And we have a presentation, some things that we are going to show, some kind of topic of some sort. And sometimes we do go long on that, but we want to make sure that as we're going through this, if you have particular questions about it, you know, let's let's dive a little bit deeper. So don't be afraid to say, hey Mark, Stop, stop, stop. You know, I, I want to go deeper into whatever it is that you're having problems with. And then at the very end, if there's something that is um, that you need to know how to do something that's not related to our topic, by all means, that's that's available as well. So thank you for that input. Anybody else? And unmute yourself. Actually, here's one. Uh, just learned about them, so this is the only only my second one. Since we are super new to the system, we need any learning we can get. Absolutely. Um, for the new agents, sometimes we go over basics, and sometimes we go over some more advanced things. But definitely, if you're a brand new agent and maybe you're missing that little piece of puzzle. It's like, maybe we covered something in another thing and, but we didn't describe it well here. If, if you just need that piece, speak up. Definitely, you know, we can do a little bit of review. I may point you to previous trainings that may help explain it a little bit better as well. Okay, well, we will go ahead and get started. For those that um, are here for the first time, welcome again, today's office hours. We're gonna be talking about automation in your business. And for first timers, this might be uh, an eye-opening experience and it may be beyond where you are right now, but at the same time, you can see where you're going to be. For those that have been on these for a while, and um, hopefully, you've, if you've used Realvolve for a while, you know some of these, but uh, wanna make sure that we cover them, make sure that everybody understands them well. So, um, at this point, let's go ahead and do a little quick introduction. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Mark Steff. I am the Chief Innovation Officer here at Realvolve, the designer of the workflow platform, the relationship scoring. There's a lot of parts and pieces of Realvolve that 
that I've brought to the system that really help you guys do what you do on a daily basis. I've, I've done this for a long time, been in real estate technology for 30 plus years, and um, I just really enjoy doing this, but I really wanna help you guys understand the why. Kendra, who is normally on with me, is uh, not feeling well, so uh, if you guys will keep her in your thoughts, uh, she will be with us probably next week. So today's goal, we're going to be talking about automations, the, the things that you can do in your business to make sure that you are more efficient. Um, for years, I've taught the concept of the core strategies, uh, core being the the real core of your business, but it's also an acronym, C-O-R-E, conversions, operations, retention, and experiences. And everything that you do in your business, no matter what it is, really falls under one of those four pieces, either conversions from the time that you try to get a lead, you get the lead, you nurture that lead, you actually convert that lead, that, that's all under the conversion section. There's automations that need to go on. And then whenever you go into your operations, all the things that you do from the time you've got that buyer's agreement, seller's agreement, the listing itself, all the way to closing day, that's all your operations, all the things that happen. And there's all kinds of automation that goes on there. And then in the retention, the, the R of core is all the things that uh, you do to retain your customers after you've closed so that they become repeat customers and they even give you referrals. So the the R is there. And then it's all wrapped up together with the E, the experience, making sure that you give everybody that, that starts from the conversion all the way to retention, give them a solid experience so that they want to come back and do business with you again. That's all you know, in that core stuff. And everything that you do is in there. We want to teach you guys how to create the automations so that at the end of the day, whenever, whenever you go home, that you know you've done all the things that you need to do, you've not left anything undone, and even whenever you're outside the office, things get done for you. So we're going to talk about um, the automation of leads that are coming into your system. We're also going to talk about unknown numbers. Like if you're using the Realvolve text messaging, making sure that you understand one of the features that's part of the automation is dealing with unknown numbers. People are texting you from a number that you don't have in your database yet. How do you deal with that? Um, how do you have an, and do you have an automated workflow in place for each of your different lead sources? So you may have leads coming in from Facebook, from Twitter, from um, your website, from realtor.com, from Zillow or wherever. Each one of those could have different, not only are they from different places, but they may have different needs. Some of them may be buyers, some of them may be sellers, and making sure that whenever they come in, you've identified them properly and put them on the right workflow through that. And then have you optimized your workflows to be automatic, and you know, automated where it is appropriate, not everything is appropriate to, to be fully automatic, but there are definitely times when you can do that. So those are kind of the goals that, um, we've set forth for this particular training and definitely if there's any questions or anything uh, in the in that mix, definitely reach out and, and let us know. Okay, so um, one of the things that I do want to make sure that everybody is aware is there are some kind of built in automations for doing certain things. And depending on how you use Realvolve, you may want to turn these on, you may want to turn them off, uh, depending on your particular <clears throat> needs. Um, if you go into the, 
the settings section and then automation, whenever it comes up to automation, you're going to get two different um, built-in automations that are either on or off for you. The first one is the category automations. There is a thought process that, that we put forward whenever we first built Realvolve was that the categories of A, B, C, and D on any contact, and whenever you go into a contact, you've got the different categories of A, B, C, and D. So the original thought was, well, if they're a A person, they've, they've probably given you probably more than one referral. They've, they've gone out and you know, they're speaking your praises and they're on your A-list, they're, they're good. And um, we wanna make sure that if they're not an A, that maybe you know, we figure out why. Well, a lot of people will use the A's for you know, giving multiple referrals, B are people that they've done at least one, biz, one piece of business with you. They've, you've had one closing with them of some sort or they've given one referral. So if they're a B and they've given you multiple referrals, Realvolve can automatically turn them into an A for you. And based off of that, your, um, your cross section will actually, your contact cross section will actually change them from a less frequent to a more frequent contacting pattern. So there's some built-in pieces there. So you may wanna turn that on or off. Just it, the only thing that it really does is it says if there's been more than one referral or they've done business with you more than one time, then it will automatically convert them from, an a, from a B to an A, okay? Now, if you are not using your categories that way, maybe your, your intent is a different purpose than that, you might want to turn this off, but just be no, be it known that you know this is a feature that's already there. And then there's also I'm going to try this. Um, there is also a field automation piece, and there's a set of rules. So I'm going to just for grins here. I'm going to go over here to uh, Realvolve and pull up these rules. So whenever you come into your settings, you come over to automation, this is where you're going to find these and you can either turn them on or you can turn them off, you know, just depending on what you're needing. There is a section here for the automation rules. And, and these are some automation pieces that we've put into place so that uh, based off of certain conditions, things can change automatically especially in the stage status arena, there are certain things. So definitely go through and spend some time and look at how these are set up because they can be very useful. But if you're not expecting a change, it could be very confusing. So I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that these are here. So, you know, if a stage is currently set to aware, you know, you've got somebody that came in, they're brand new to, uh, to you as a, as a brand new lead. And um, then that, that's uh, when the status is set to uh, prospect or lead, that stage, the stage that goes with it, changes from aware to no. So there's the stage and status work together at different things. And based off of changes to these, you can have it automatically change your, your stage, your status, and um, kind of go through these. Each one of them have different purposes, and it really goes along with the idea, the concept of what we do whenever we're in our dashboard about dealing with our contact cross-section, because the cross-section is another piece of the automation puzzle that says, okay, as people come into my system, I'm going to be making phone calls, sending, starting workflows, sending messages. And ultimately, the whole goal is to kind of move them. They're going to kind of move around. Uh, I've seen kind of go in a, a circular pattern up and to the right. It's kind of the, the progression. You very rarely have numbers in these the upper left and lower right corners. If you do, there's probably something wrong. 
and you probably need to check on those. But suspects are people that, you know, they're brand new, you've not made any co uh, kind of communication with them. Prospects, you've started communicating with them, but you don't necessarily know that you're, um, that you're going to be able to help them yet. Uh, leads are qualified leads. You know you can help them and you start nurturing them more and then they become clients and then you go through the process of closing them and then they become past clients. I mean, that's the whole idea of the contact cross-section. Well, during those that process of going from suspect to past client, they go through different phases of aware, know, like, and trust. Your goal as an agent is to help them like you, you know, give, nurturing them and stuff. And the, the automations that are in there, the built-in automations allow you to say, well, once they've given me multiple referrals or they've done multiple transactions for me, it's more than like they, they trust me. And that, that's the automation. It moves them automatically from like to trust. You don't have to do it. Um, if, if you're doing stuff with them, it moves them automatically from suspect to prospect, prospect to lead, lead to client, and, and so on. So th that automation piece is, is critical. So if you don't have them turned on, you come into your automation section, then you don't have those turned on. I, I would highly recommend you take a look at the rules, the, the automation rules that we have in place right now. And if, if everything sounds good, in it, then then turn those on. So that's one thing. Any questions about that? Hopefully not. Um, all right. The so that's the built-in automation. So the other thing that we have built in that a lot of people aren't aware of, and I want to make sure that you guys are fully aware of, is our unknown contacts piece. So, um, and let me just go into, uh, got out of it, um, go into um, settings, under your settings, and then SMS services. So whenever you set up SMS services for your account, as you know, we assign you a, or you can pick from a list of assigned SMS numbers. And those SMS numbers, anytime you send through Realvolve, messages go out through that number. And we just do not have the capability of sending it through your own number. It's it's just not possible um, because of all the different providers and stuff that's out there to do that ac accurately and be able to do some automation with it. So we use services to handle that that SMS process so we can control it. What does happen is people will, at times send you an SMS of some sort and they're not in your database. And if they're not in your database, but they still send you something, somehow they got that number. Now it could be some kind of um, message that was sent out. Maybe somebody forwarded it, they got your number and, and now they're sending it to you. Some users will you know, put, you know, for more information, you know, text this number or whatever. And if if you have that and it's an unknown person, what you can do is um, have it start a workflow for you automatically. So just to give you guys an example of this, what I would like for you to do is just text the word book to my Realvolve SMS number, 417-719-1200. And what will happen is it will send my Realvolve account a message book, and more than likely you guys aren't in this particular database, so it'll it'll come in, and it will send you back a message saying, "Hey, you know, thank you for registering for the book giveaway. I just kind of set up this. What what I am going to do um, from the people that do do this." I'm having you asking you to do something. I'm going to give one of my books away. I don't know if you guys are aware of um, our best workflow secrets book that I wrote um, with 
along with Cody, my son, and uh, I'm going to give that away to somebody that does um, provide that. I may do that periodically, so um, it's just have a kind of an ongoing drawing. So definitely, uh, if you don't win now, definitely reach out. It does also have a link so you can buy it, but you don't have to do that. Uh, no purchase necessary. Um, so, but if you will do that, what, what will happen is, let me just kind of step you through that process, is whenever you specify and whenever you come into this SMS services, you can pick any number of workflows, their contact workflows that are available. So as you go through that process, the, the system says, okay, do I have this contact? If I don't, it adds the contact as an unknown contact into the database. And then it starts a workflow on there. So in this case, um, I've got a workflow called book giveaway. Book giveaway, and it just does one thing. And in, in this case, it says send giveaway link, you know, whatever. Um, and if we come in here, you'll see that um, it's got the title of the activity. What's most important about this example is that um, even though the schedule says zero days after start date, which is really what it is, but um, down here in the action part of this, it actually goes through and says, okay, the title of this is SMS book link. I want to send it immediately. So as soon as this workflow starts, it, it basically ignores the scheduling, okay? And what it does then is it goes in and, and it sends immediately whatever content I've specified. Now, this could be some kind of autoresponder to the lead coming in. Hey, thank you for visiting my website, you know, whatever. But in this case, I've got it specifically for unknown contacts that, um, that I want to do something. Now, the, what it does is it, is it sends this particular template and we'll go take a quick look at the template itself. And it just says, hey, you know, thanks for contacting me to enter the book giveaway. Give me your name Hi, and, and email. Yes. Um, I can barely see this. I mean, I can't see what's on the content on the screen. What's that? Is that better? Is it? Is that better? You see it? I just kind of zoomed in some. No. Hmm. Is anybody else having challenges with that? Are you guys seeing the entire screen from, from left to right? Looks fine to me. Very clear. Okay. I, and, oh, okay. Because I, I can see the screen, but I like the words on there. I can't see it. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll zoom in just a little bit more. We'll have to zoom it back. <laughs> there. there you go. That kind of takes up the entire screen. Um, or should anyway, um, just says, thanks for contacting me. Here's, uh, you know, to enter the book away, get your name and, and email. Um, if you don't win, you can, you can buy the link. So, and, and it should have a link now for you guys, you know, what I would probably actually do is, uh, have a form link and I'm just using a short link here. I mean, this is just, you can use any kind of short link, but, um, use a short link to a form that says, hey, thanks for visiting my website or thanks for whatever, um, you know, fill in this information so I can get more details on your needs and, you know, what kind of house are you looking for or whatever. And then use that as part of a Zapier import to bring in information from a Google form. So that would be a, an option as well. But just think about, you know, all the different ways that people come in and make sure that you've got automations to, to deal with that. That makes sense, any questions on that? Yes, I have a question. Okay. 
Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, so you're saying like if um, a contact gets zapped in through Zapier, um, it would automatically trigger this workflow? It can. And um, I think actually that's my next piece here. Uh, yeah, so what we're going to do, I'm going to take you through the process of using Zapier because Zapier is extremely powerful for lots of different sources. And we're going to go through and kind of show you what that piece is. But I'll show you how to auto start those workflows from, from Zapier as well. That, will that okay, answer? well, in this example, is it just yeah, in this particular example, Go this ahead, is I'm more sorry. like more like somebody found your number, your your Realvolve number, or maybe you're publishing it somewhere um, on a sign writer or something, and says, you know, text you know, one two three at this number, and uh, it's going to start some kind of workflow. Now, currently, and I'm and this is something that I've got planned for our team to add is a way to do evaluation of what they're texting. I told you guys textbook to that number. And right now it does not evaluate what's being said, but once I make some changes, we're going to be able to say, okay, maybe it's the, the property number one, two, three, four, five, you know, whatever. Um, text one, two, three, four, five at this number. And then it could, come back and send them a text to some doc sheet on that property or something. You know, there's, there's services out there that do that right now. Lots of them have been out there for a long time. Um, that's something that could be done. This particular one is just finding out who is this person? You know, what, what is it that they need? How can I help them? So you could do some kind of something. I just used a book giveaway ex example just to kind of show it to you very quickly. So is this where it's kind of going to send um, one, one um, basically like an email or I mean a text back to the correct back yeah. to the person? Yeah. In, okay. In, in this particular case, it was just set up with one activity. However, the, there's no reason why you couldn't have multiple activities, and then over time it just drips on them with you know uh, some kind of message a day for a while or you know whatever until they do finally give you the information, then you can stop that workflow once they give you their information. So you can, okay. the, the fact that you can start a workflow is the important part. What you do in that workflow is arbitrary because you can do virtually anything. I mean, you could, if that, if that lead comes in, just as an example, if this lead comes in through an SMS and I start this process, I could send them to a Google form. You know, maybe I send them to a, you know, an unknown contact form. And in that it asks for their name and cell phone stuff. Well, this information gets put into a spreadsheet. And then that spreadsheet has their basic information that we can then turn around and say, hey, Zapier, bring this information in. And it will do based off of I already have their cell phone number. It'll do a lookup of that cell phone. Do I already have this contact? And it'll update that contact information from the form that you've got filled in. So it can even automate, because what happens is whenever Realvolve gets these notifications, so like if we look in here, we've got all of, uh, you guys have been responding and you'll see that it has all these unknown contact, unknown contact. I don't know who you are necessarily. Okay, but if I go to one of these, let's go to this most recent one. So here is the unknown contact record that was was built. And sorry if I just made your phone number public here. Um, I can blur those out for our replay. Um, then now I have your name and your email. I can come in here and change it. Now the goal will be, and and something that. Um, is not there right now, but that analyze, analyzing content using AI will be to say, okay, we just got information from this contact. Let's auto update the contact. So it would automatically fill in based off of responses. But you know, this your initial contact to me, I didn't have this number in the database. 
I sent you this and you replied with this. Now I have the information. Let's let's update. Now, you, you know, right now just be a manual update, but you've got now good information of somebody that wants to do something. I could then come over here and start a workflow for continuing nurturing and stuff. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. Absolutely. All right. So let me do, 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 come back over here. And so talk about Zapier. Now, Zapier, for those that aren't familiar with Zapier, Zapier is a software as a service, a SaaS company that allows third-party applications like Realvolve to be able to communicate with, send data, send information back and forth to other SaaS companies like Realvolve. So um, one particular one would be like, I wanna create a Google form. And maybe whenever somebody fills out this form that I, I want it to do something you know, with the information. Maybe it's an open house registration. You, you've gone to, you're going to an open house, you set up a form. People can then, whenever they come into your open house, you might have a QR code posted somewhere that says, please register here. So they can um, use the QR code, immediately go to this form, fill out their information on their mobile or or whatever, you know, if you give them some kind of incentive, like a book or, you know, whatever content that would be useful to it, they are more apt to giving you good content. And then that content then can be um, put into a spreadsheet. That spreadsheet information can then be used to fill in Realvolve through Zapier. So, you know, I, I put in some some fields like this. I can come over here to the responses, and I'm just going to create a, a new form here just for grins. So what this does is whenever somebody fills out this form, this unknown contact form, say Mark 417-555-1212. Mark at Realvolve.com, and then I hit submit. The information from that form then gets automatically put into a spreadsheet row here. Okay. Now, Zapier has the ability to say, well, if I get a new spreadsheet row of information, in a given spreadsheet, you've got to do a little setup on which account, which spreadsheet, what's the trigger. In this case, the trigger is a, a, a new spreadsheet row. Somebody just added you know, some row information. Then I want that contact to automatically go into Realvolve. And so we've got an event called Create Contact. Uh, you choose which, um, which account you, you connect your account to that. The important part is this action. So um, I'm using a different spreadsheet here. It's not first name, last name, but in, in this particular spreadsheet, it's, it's you know, using um, a sample name, foreign law, George Lineman, um, title, company. These are all different fields that we have available as part of our Zapier integration and Zapier then says, okay, based off of these fields being filled in from the spreadsheet, I'm going to fill them in from that spreadsheet into the appropriate field within Realvolve. So, you know, depending on what fields you have in your spreadsheet, you can fill them in. Um, what's important, there's two fields here that are actually probably three, uh, tags. So tags... Everybody should be using tags, <laughs> um, depending on your usage of tags, which allow you to quickly find contacts in different ways. You can go in and say, well, I want this to be a, you know, a new lead uh, tag, and you can separate them with a comma. So if you want to add multiple tags, you just put a, a comma between them. 
Um, maybe this was my, um, you know, open house tag and, you know, whatever else you might want to put in there. So you can, you can put multiple tags or you can um, pick from some of the fields of information to fill in those tags as well. So if you, if there's some field in there for, are you a buyer or are you a seller? Well, you may want that as part of a tag. And you can then put that tag in there as a as a entry as a field. Actually, let me just show you how that would be done. Um, okay, just let's pretend like this phone number instead of it being a phone number, it was the the type of buyer. You know, it, what, are they a buyer? Are they a seller? Whatever. So you can you can intermingle static text with field text that comes from your spreadsheet. So maybe they're a buyer, open house, new lead. Whenever the new lead is added, that's probably something where it's more of a temporary tag where you're gonna say, okay, pull up all my new leads that I've not really done anything with. Now let me do some stuff with them, take that tag off and you know start a workflow on them individually and, and do some stuff. So that's the type of thing that you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and just take that tag off because it doesn't quite make sense with a phone number there might be confusing for some people so tags is one important automation that you you need to have in place the other one is the source you no know, did this come from my website did it come from an open house uh, you can you can do different types of things for for that piece you can only have one source Whenever a contact's added, it'll add the source, but it can only be one source where tags, you can have multiple tags. The next thing is, is starting a workflow on a new contact. Now you should have automations set up. Like I said, maybe you've got an automation for Zillow, maybe a different automation for realtor.com or for an open house. Every different source has probably a few different minor processes that you do differently. They may be gathering different bits of information, different ways. Are they buyers? Are they sellers? And so you're going to treat them differently. And by treating them differently basically means I need to have a different workflow set up for them. There may be some similarities between them, but definitely they, they do a few different things. So if it's a brand new contact, I didn't have this contact in the database before, now I do, I wanna start this workflow. If I had them in the database previously, and this is more of an update, then I might wanna run a different workflow based off of that. So you've, you've got some conditional options there, whether you wanna do it on, on a new or an update. You, both of them could be the same if you want, that's perfectly uh, available. There is an option for the updates. Do you only want to run this once? You know, there may be something where people are constantly doing this and you don't want them to start that workflow over and over and over each time. So you might set that to no, but, um, or yes, because you only want to run it once. If you do want it to run multiple times then you can set no, and then it'll just Keep, uh, keep starting that workflow depending on what you're needing. But um, the way it determines whether it's a new contact or an updated contact is by the home mobile phone number and or the home email. So if you're collecting phone numbers or emails, typically they're fairly unique amongst a given person. Now I know some people share emails, couples, can share an email. In this case, what would happen is it would update uh, one or the other and, and you know, potentially cause some challenges. But we try to use these as unique identifiers to see, do we have this name already in the database? If we do, then it's gonna update it automatically. If, it's, if we don't have either the, the cell phone or the home email, then it will treat it as a brand new contact and the new contact workflow will be started. Any questions there? Okay. Um, along, so I have a question. Okay, go ahead. So, 
So the workflow will be automatically start as a new lead workflow um, through Realvolve? Correct. Yes, yeah, soon, okay. as, soon as this zap, there, there's a trigger, which is the new row gets added to the spreadsheet in this case. The action is add this contact information to the database. If they're new contact, it's going to start the new contact workflow. If it's an update, it's going to start the updated workflow. And it does it automatically. Now, that workflow can have one activity in it. It could have hundreds of activities in it, whatever you want to do. The, the point, though, is making sure it's relevant to whatever, you know, have a different zap based off of each different source that is, um, that you have out there, you know, again, maybe it's a Zillow, maybe it's a realtor, maybe it's your website, maybe it's your blog site, whatever. Make sure you, you handle a, a different zap based off of, you can have them all generic, but then they're getting, they're getting started on a workflow that may not be relevant to them. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the other things that you can do as you're filling in the zap, you can come in here and say, well, I want the stage to be, you know, where no like or trust and, and um, the, the status being suspect prospect lead. So you can assign these values based off of what they are. If your form just happens to have a birthday, make sure, you know, anniversary, home purchase date, these are some of the fields that you can update through that zap in the system. The other thing, and Zillow has this, um, they, there is a field that they send as part of their, their zap about what is the interested property address. And you can put in that address that they're most interested in, and that's a field within the database. You could then say um, in a SMS or an email back to the person, hey, Joe, uh, saw that you were looking at property 123 South Main Street on Zillow. Um, you know, if there's anything I can answer, please let me know. I also have other properties similar to this if you're interested. Know, giving them some kind of call to action that would allow them to be more up to communicating with you. So using that one's uh, a good piece, and that's you know part of the automation. Um, the A, B, C, and D categories, you know, definitely you can fill those in. Kids' names, um, the contact type, almost all. Uh, the, the default on this one is client. So it'll almost always put it in as client, but you can choose other ones based off of what you need. But using Zapier to bring content in, you know, your stage, your status, uh, last call, all that automatic, can automatically be filled in from some form of some sort. You can uh, start the workflow automatically and it can sign different workflows to leads based off of different things. Um, it can set your lead source automatically. And um, then you can also assign your leads using Realvolve's routing rules. Now, let me, uh, let me show you guys that because that's kind of important. If you're in a team and you've got maybe a common lead source area that, that you guys all share and maybe do like a round robin, so in settings, if you come in under the settings section of Realvolve, come down here to the bottom for, um, actually, let me, uh, down here at the very bottom is record owner assignments. I'm, a, I'm not sure I really like the name on that, but um, what it is, is it allows you to set up what, it's typically known as a round robin record owner assignment, meaning a lead comes in, maybe there's five of you in a team and uh, a lead comes in and you want to assign the first lead to the first person in the, in the list. And then the next lead, I go to the next user in the list. And what happens is, Zapier can be told which leads are coming in based off of this record owner assignment. So 
Um, up here at the top, you can click on the little plus, say, um, you know, open house leads. I'm going to do this round robin. You do have an option called multiple owners where if leads are coming in and maybe you guys work as a close team and it really doesn't matter that it's assigned to you or your maybe your partner, you just want them assigned to both of you. You can use the multiple owners and then you can just come in here and say, well, I want it assigned to Joe and to Bobby. So they both have access to that lead. Um, for the round robin, it's a little bit different in that it goes by order of whatever you have in here. So the first lead would go to Joe, the next lead that comes in would go to Annie, and then the next lead would go then to Bobby. So you, you click on save on that, and then I now have my open house leads as, a, as an option. So whenever you're in Zapier, if I come over here to, to, to record owner, on the record owner piece here, I can click on the drop down and it will show me who do I want to be the record owner of any records that comes through this zap. I can pick any of my team members that's in there, or I can pick from any of the assignment areas in which case um, open house leads is the one I just created. So I could, I could choose that. And then it will then says, okay, based off of one lead, it goes to the first lead in my round Robin. Another lead comes in, it goes to the next person. So this is a way that you can kind of mix and, and match your, your leads based off of stuff. There are some additional things that you can do based off of maybe zip codes and stuff like that, that, that entails setting up some filters uh, between here. So it says, okay, or if the price of the house is over $2 million, I want it to go to this team versus this team. You can, you can do some stuff. Um, I would encourage you guys to reach out to our support team for that. That's a, quite a bit more detailed, but it is possible just to let you know. So once those leads come in, then, then it starts the, the workflow. The workflow then does its thing, and then you get all the different contacts in the database. So if I come in here and look, there's you know, the, the people that came in for, for the book piece. Um, so that, then I can go through and I can start doing whatever. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we actually kind of talked about this, the actual automation. I mean, you know, have a plan for each of your lead sources. Like I said, whether it's Zillow, Realtor.com, whatever, the round robin we talked about, the source we talked about, um, auto starting. Um, one thing that I I want to make sure, and and I did say it, but I just want to make sure you guys understood it, is there are, let's go back to that book one more quick. So the automation that's built in for the action, in, in this case, I'm just sending that link back to, um, to things, and we've got an option here for Immediately, which I said, just as soon as the workflow starts, it ignores, basically it, it ignores the schedule altogether. It just says, once the workflow starts, immediately send it. Otherwise, it uses the, the calculation of the schedule and it, it uses this option to say, well, based off of whatever scheduled date calculation there is, do you want me to send it? automatically, just on that day, just automatically send it? Or do we wanna do some manual stuff? A lot of people, because they don't trust automation at times, they'll say, well, I want, I want it to at least notify me before it actually sends it. So a lot of people will just go in there and say, send manually with preview. And if the preview looks good, then I'll send it manually. You know, I just, I'll, I'll send it. Um, 
I would encourage you guys, once you become more comfortable with the automation, the things that Realvolve does, if it if it's some kind of lead type email that's going out that just really doesn't need to be verified at, at any kind of you know, verification content wise, just set it to automatic. It's going to free you up. It's going to free your time. It's going to free your mind. You don't have to worry about it. It just goes out. And it, that's, that's part of helping you guys free your time is making sure you're not having to do every little step. Now, one thing that is important is under the settings is that under the email section, and this really goes for emails and SMS, is auto send emails and SMS. This does have to be turned on for any kind of automated process to be sent. So make sure that you've got that on. And then also assign the time that you want things to be bulk sent if there's not a time assigned to the activity. If an activity has a particular time, say, I want this to go out at 10 o'clock, it should go out around 10 o'clock. If it doesn't have that time assigned to it, it will use whatever's in here as part of the automation time. So it doesn't send something at you know 3 a.m. in the morning. It, it sends it at whatever time you want your bulk uh, messages to go out, whether that's email or SMS. So make sure that you have that turned on so that your automations can go out. Um, automating your workflows. We just talked about this. We talked about the automatic versus immediate and um, automatic text reminders. Definitely, if you've got some kind of workflow that, you know, leads are coming in and you, they're requesting some kind of information, you, know, you can set immediately to respond to them. It would start the workflow, immediately respond to them. I would also encourage you to set up an automatic reminder text to yourself or to the team member that's supposed to get that so that you know that that lead just came in. So not only are you sending automatically the information to the client, the lead, but you're also sending a message to yourself and, and you can set up the text messages just by the, the assigned to or the party members and assign that to yourself to, to be going out. I have a question, Mark. Cool. I, I noticed in Revolve that um, when I'm setting up an action, it has the immediate mode is off. Okay, so if you have checklist items, immediate is not available, meaning a checklist is something that um, has to be completed. You have to check off all your completion options before the, the activity can be considered complete. So if you've got that, or if you've got multiple actions, we don't allow you to do immediate on multiple actions. It has to be one action per activity if it's immediate. Do either one of those show up that way? Not sure who asked that. It was me, uh, Tiffany. It's Tiffany, okay. Tiffany, check to see if, if either you've got checklists on that or if you've got multiple actions. And if you do, that's probably why you can't do immediate. Okay. Um, either that or it's possible, I would say that you don't, that the schedule part of it, you may have it set as a task. I'm not sure, let me just see real quickly. Let me go back here. I don't know if that would do it or not. Let me just grab one here. This is not even, this is not the same thing, but so like on here, I've got multiple actions and I've got checklists. So if I come in here and I try to do immediate, um, send immediate 
actually does allow me, but I I don't think it will actually do it. I think it'll it'll squawk at me. Um, the other thing is is on the schedule piece. You know, it needs to be some kind of calculated day or specific. If you have it set to none, uh, it may not be able to do the action because. Um, you just to try that. I'm not sure if that's an option or not. Yeah, I always usually do the calculated date or completion of. Mm. If you've got it set for any of these, it really should allow that. It's just, it, it may squawk at you whenever you go to save it and it'll say you can't send it immediately because of, uh, you can only send immediate on things that do not have checklists and only has one action. We we just don't currently allow people to, because you might have one action that's immediate and one that's not, and it's like, well, which one do you want? Well, I'm confused. So, and you probably don't want to send out three immediates, but um, in this particular case, you know, I couldn't do an immediate in this particular one, but uh, if just a title and an action should allow you without problem. If if there is a problem there, let me know or let let our support team know, and we'll go through that. Okay. Um, yeah, this is uh, wanted to kind of call your attention to whenever you're setting up activities. Most of the time, most activities, most activities just have you know a calculated date, zero days from start date or whatever. We do have the ability to set the time, the start and end time. So you know if you wanted something to you know be at a certain time every day or whatever, or if if this was like your closing day and you wanted a closing time, uh, you could you put that closing time in there as a time, a, a starting time. Maybe it's just noon or whatever, and then. You can change the time once you have a time, and then it would it would appropriately change it in your calendar as well. So there's there's some automation that's built in to help automate that process. Not to mention, and I want to make sure everybody knows this is whenever you start a workflow, there are things that dates of things that you may not know yet. Uh, photography date, you know. You may not know exactly what day photography is going to be on, but you want to start the workflow anyway. There is built in automation that says, well, if you fill in the photography date, it's going to backfill any activities that you didn't know the date on. So while that's it's kind of a built in feature automations, it's, it's important to know that because once that gets filled in, there may be other activities that get calculated based off of the completion of that activity and those things get get set up. So a lot of automation that's built into RealVolve to help make your life easier. But if you're unaware of them, uh, you may be doing it the hard way. Um, now, uh, this is something else that's, that's nice and, and important to know is in those actions, uh, just realize that if you've got somebody in your parties, uh, say, for instance, your buyers, your sellers, whatever, and you want to start a workflow, and in that workflow, you want it to automatically add past client and uh, remove active or you know whatever, you can do that through uh, through the action of an activity. So you can automatically add and remove tags from contacts, properties, or transactions. Um, there is a little checkbox that says add or remove from the contacts. If you have a property workflow and you use the add and remove, by default, it'll use, it'll add it to the property, that the tag will be added or removed from the property. But if you check this checkbox, it's gonna look at the party member option and say, oh, we need to add or remove these tags from whoever's in the with field of this, not just the, the individual property or transaction. So ultimately, if you go through a, a 
closing process of some sort, and you want to set your tag from active to past client, this is how you would do it. Um, so uh, the system will go ahead and just automatically um, put that client from active to past client. As long as this if you check works. that box. Yeah, if you if you if you set this workflow up as an action, it will do that process for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're you're running an action. You now you can have it run automatically, which is uh, there is an option that says run action automatically. And you can check that checkbox and it will uh, do the tags automatically. It'll do the workflows automatically. And it can also do webhooks automatically um, as part of an action instead of kind of stepping through or confirming that, that it needs to be done. So we are, um, I was a little bit, too wordy, I guess. We're we're right at time. Um, anybody have any final questions that I didn't didn't hit, or something that you'd like me to go over? We can go a little bit long, if need be. All right. Um, go. I always had a question about like I wanted to send out like a mass text, and I was taking a look. The only way would be to do that is to actually tag um, the parties and then set it up as a workflow? Yes. Um, now, just be aware. So nothing yeah, be aware that uh, there are, and the reason why we don't do it right now, actually you can, you can actually do it through the mobile app of RealBob for up to 50 contacts, but, um, there are rules in place today that all the phone companies are blocking numbers and doing things to prevent spam. And yeah, they opted in, but you can get flagged really quick. People get grumpy about it and it, it can really be detrimental to you financially if, if you're caught doing that. Um, so just be very cautious of doing that. I know there's services out there that do it, but there's some strict rules that you have to follow in order to to do that process. So, uh, but yeah, what what you can do is is say you know you can go into your contacts, you can mark a bunch of people that maybe are, you know, on my update list. You know, maybe maybe I've just got a tag called update list. Well, I could go into my system. And I could set up a new workflow called um, SMS my um, update list and it's contact and and um, send updates. And I want to do that with anyone tagged with. And here's the little caution: uh, make sure you only do this once, type thing. Um, with um, update list. If I if I had oops, if I had a, a tag called update list, then it would it would do anybody that's on my update list. I want to do an action of um, SMS. I would have to I could do it as automatic or immediate and do SMS and then pick that that um, whatever it is that I'm I'm doing um, in this case you know, the link or whatever so then if I if I run this workflow today and I'm not setting this up as a repeat or anything um, then anybody, whenever it goes to run this, it's going to find anybody that's tagged with update list and immediately send them that that SMS. And then if I need to change that message, I just go and change the template and then run that same workflow 
again, and it would then find anybody tagged with update list. So it can be done and, and automated, but you just wanna be very, very careful doing that, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, for those that are still with us, thank you guys for hanging with us. Uh, just some notes, you know, we're still doing a 25% off the semi-annual and self-service nav. Be sure to reach out to our sales team if you're interested in, in that. Uh, Kendra and, and the team are there to help you guys. If you really wanna get deeper into it, but not sure that you have the knowledge or time to do it yourself. Uh, future topics, we're gonna be talking about building a team, um, doing the Google add-on sheet reporting. Uh, that was a piece that I created where you can actually take real Vob data and update Google Sheet with, with information that could be useful for doing some analytics and stuff and then leveling up your uh, contract to close process. So um, thank you guys for attending today. Sorry we went a little bit long, but um, hope this was useful. If you guys uh, think so, let us know. If you would like to see some other particular topics, reach out to mm -hmm. us and um, be happy to, to cover those topics. So everybody have a great day. We appreciate you. Talk to you later. Bye.